The day is finally here. Well, actually it was here a few days ago, but hey, the big day is here. Canonical has launched version 1.0 of Touch, its smartphone and tablet focused OS for the Galaxy Nexus, the Nexus 4, the 2012 Nexus 7 and the Nexus 10. Is it all Canonical has hyped it up to be? And does an open source OS that isn't even made by Google stand a chance? I'm Dom from SJP and let's check out the Ubuntu Touch version 1.0. For the last few months, Canonical has been releasing developer previews for Touch, the smartphone and tablet OS. And those of you who have been watching this channel for a while know that I've been trying out a build a month every month and recording my findings on to track the progress. Well, it's 1.0 time and I have to say, I'm underwhelmed. For starters, there's still not an easy way to install it. Touch still needs to be installed on a Linux distro through a command line, with technical terms and acronyms like PPAs, ADB and Fastboot and just much more jargon that confuse people. Now, they do say on this side this is still for developers, but it's a 1.0 release and people still get it, so I'm treating it like an available product. Another part is there's no boot up logo, so when turning the device on, which seems to take way too long anyway, it's boring and you have no indication of how long it's going to take. And there's no, also no power menu when trying to turn it off, so when you hit the power button, or hold the power button, it just, well, goes off. Another thing that isn't so great is the apps. Apart from a distinct lack of third party apps, as any new platform has, there's also a significant first party app missing, a native email client. Sure, there's a Gmail icon there, but that's just a crappy web app. It won't look for emails in the background and then notify you of unread ones. It waits to be open and then refresh to tell you you have 50 unread messages. It just isn't a good experience. I mean, Firefox OS even has an email client. Another thing about the web apps is, well, they're inconsistent. Facebook and Google believe they're being accessed from an iOS device most of the time, as does Twitter, but only sometimes. Sometimes they think they're being accessed from a feature phone from the early 2000s. And there isn't an app store per se. Below your installed apps there is a more suggestions list. But it's not the same as an app store. I'm not sure if this next part is a feature that's not been implemented yet. Or if it's a choice they went with for some reason. But there's no haptic feedback. Anywhere. And nowhere is it more evident than in the keyboard. The keyboard is just appallingly bad if you rely on either haptic feedback or autocorrect. Another feature which is annoyingly absent. And... At least in this build, there is a keyboard bug that prevents the keyboard from popping up when it's wanted. The only way I found to fix this was a reboot. And one of my last few gripes with Canonical's initial release is that it just doesn't feel finished. It still feels like they could have done with another month or two's worth of developer previews. Animations look jerky and stuttery. Scrolling is still choppy most of the time. It's locked up on me three times while shooting the segments for this video. The ambient light says has a mind of its own and there's no way to disable automatic brightness adjustment. And last but not least, the camera. The viewfinder cuts off a bit of each side. My guess is that the viewfinder app was coded with the 720p screen of the Galaxy Nexus in mind, and not the 768p of the Nexus 4, leaving 24 pixels either side of the viewfinder as grey space. Oh, and the video recording doesn't work either yet. But it's not all bad. The OS is still really beautiful in my eyes, and it really does show potential. The multitasking is good, and once you've mastered the gestures, you'll be flying around the OS in no time. But until these kinks and bugs are worked out, I'm afraid many people will overlook Ubuntu Touch and not even give it the time of day. Which is a real shame, as I would love to use it more once it's polished. That is Ubuntu Touch version 1.0. Unfortunately, I'm not quite sure Canonical got where it wanted to be for its 1.0 release, but I'm still very excited for Ubuntu Touch. Especially early next year when some devices come preloaded with Touch on it, so we get to see the improvements there. But what did you think? Does Ubuntu Touch stand a chance in this already crowded market with Google, Apple and Microsoft and well, many others all eyeing up the same customers? Comment down below with your thoughts, or you can get to me on Twitter which is at mobile underscore dom, or you can circle me on Google+, which is gplus.to forward slash Domenico Lamberti, or if you're watching on YouTube you can just, you know, click on my name. Until next time guys, toodle pip.